South African National Roads Agency will collect e-tolls until December 2023. The extension comes despite promises of cancellation by Minister of Finance Ino Kotongwana last year. We're now joined by Wayne Duvenage, Alta CEO, to weigh in on this. Wayne, surprise, surprise. Any on your end? <laughs> you know, I don't know if we could ever be surprised anymore. This scheme... They've stopped summonsing as far back as 2019. I think that, that was the first acknowledgement that the whole system has failed. They never got above 40% of collections when they should be at 90. Uh, and then the, 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 the scheme has been extended ongoingly. Uh, we believe very regularly because you should go out to tender. But I guess who's going to tender for a scheme that has already been announced is going to be closed down. But, uh, yeah, in October last year, the Minister of Finance announced that uh, the scheme would be financed through uh, fis fiscal mechanisms, which we've been promoting and, and, and suggesting for many years. And uh, eventually they accept that decision uh, and they just can't implement it. They make a decision that they'll end e-tolls. They even say they're going to refund those who have paid, which is quite surprising. Uh, and that was all going to happen by the end of December 2022. We now are told the scheme is running to December 2023. And it just, it just mind boggles us. So why government can't implement its own decisions? Uh, it just doesn't that make sense to us. What do road users in the meantime need to know? Well, they need to know that there's no consequences if they don't pay. So the last 10% of people that are still paying, maybe they can help uh, government uh, and jolt them into action by stopping to pay. So the few fleet companies and car rental companies that are still paying, uh, we urge them, stop paying. There are no consequences. Uh, you know, when government says uh, we're going to refund those who have paid, that's the first signal to say, well, then I should stop paying now so you don't have to refund me later. The second thing that there is a current 10%, it really is a small percentage, that are still paying and keeping it alive. Uh, uh, why they should stop is that government departments themselves don't even pay e-tolls. And it's not that they're exempt. So you've got every reason to say, look, enough is enough. They're passing the costs on to consumers. They don't need to do that anymore. Mm. So what does this mean? I mean, what options are available now, especially to the public? Is litigation on the cards? No, I mean, we are defending, uh, and those cases are still there, 3,000 uh, motorists uh, or 2,500 motorists that gave us mandates to do so when they were summons. Those summons are still alive, and we are asking Sunra what they want to do about those. Whether they'll summons again, we're not sure. Uh, we think that would be crazy because, as I said, this is, this is a, like the declaration of war against citizens. And they stopped summonsing in 2019 because it wasn't good for votes. Uh, remember the 2019 elections. Uh, so for them to reintroduce them would be strange, but not impossible. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've always said to the public, we will defend anybody who gets a summons from Sanro for the non-payment of e-tolls. That the promise is still out there. It still lives on, even though we've gone well beyond the e-toll project. But we will fight this until the end. And we say to motorists uh, and to businesses, we encourage them, do not pay for a scheme that has failed and government has decided to end anyway. It is the most irrational system, uh, and there's no consequences if they don't pay. If you are paying, the money is best in your bank account than in San Ramos. Wayne Duvenage, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, CEO of Alta.